Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Annie Jennings PR Real Story Teleseminars series. Annie Jennings PR is a strategic marketing and publicity firm that offers advanced branding, publicity, marketing, social media creation and integration, promotion, and book publicity services to experts and analysts who would like to showcase their expertise via the media. Clients include CEOs and C-suite executives who want to stay visible to their customers, clients, and shareholders by being seen and heard in the media, commenting on socially relevant issues of the day. Annie Jennings PR also works with authors who wish to share Share their message with millions using radio, TV, internet, and print media. Annie Jennings PR books experts, analysts, CEOs, executives, and authors on the major media every day and is well known for offering the most powerful radio campaign your money can buy, the 10 million real live listener radio campaign, offering bookings on the major player shows in the top markets in the country. And today we have a very special guest with us, patient advocate and nurse practitioner Lynn Parker, who is author of What Did the Doctor Just Say, who has appeared on radio shows across the country, including national programs, some of the most influential hosts in America, sharing her message and helping patients out there everywhere and saving lives. So welcome, Annie Jennings and Lynn Parker. Thank you very much, Susan. I appreciate that. I'm very excited today to be interviewing Lynn Parker. Lynn Parker is one of our radio clients. And Lynn, uh, of course, Lynn, you did a terrific job on your radio campaign. You were a smash hit. I don't think there was ever one instance when a host didn't email us back or a producer email us back and say, wow, she was terrific. So I want to tell you up front, they love you out there. Wow. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. And, and, and I want to say that everything that Stacy said is true. <laughs> well, thank you. That's, I, I think thank that, you. That's, 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 that's just it. You guys provided fabulous opportunities for me to be fabulous in. Without, without that hard work and that access and, and those opportunities and those connections, it, it wouldn't happen this way. It was magic. Right. It was all magic from the beginning. It was all magic from the beginning, and for us it's a lot of formula because we have a strategy, and you basically went into the strategy that we have in place, that is to research, develop, and magnify an expert so that you can achieve your, you can achieve your dreams and your optimal potential as well. So the whole time you're doing these interviews, we're working behind the scenes, making sure you're tying into the breaking news, you're socially relevant, and you can get booked on these big shows. That's so, 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 so true. Mm -hmm. I mean, from the, um, the first meeting with Jason, um, and for those of you who don't know, Jason is the uh, producer who connects with the radio shows and, and gets you booked, and he went right into um, how can, you know, how do I tie in, and we were right there at the edge of health care reform and talking about mm -hmm. the cost of health care reform and so forth, and he went there. And then uh, Stacy and I... Um, inspired together to say, you know, this book can go anywhere um, because it's neutral and because it goes across fields and the ideas were coming and where the um, opportunities came, that's where you guys put me. And you, and you wanted me to be there and you were plugging for me and you were mining those opportunities. Oh, yeah, that, that absolutely. Awesome. Awesome. I think when you came to us, you had a dream and you told me this too. And you told me that you really wanted to save 100,000 lives. That was your dream. That was your mission. You didn't want to stop until you felt that you saved 100,000 lives. We felt the same way. We didn't want to stop until you achieved your goals and your dreams. That is that we felt that you achieved what it is that you came into this for. That is you wanted to reach enough people so that you could save 100,000 lives. So we booked you on all these major national shows. You really reached out. We got great feedback. And then finally, at the very end of the campaign, I don't know if you remember this, is that mm -hmm. the campaign was kind of wrapped up. We had over-delivered. You got a lot of great uh -huh. shows. Uh -huh. But I didn't feel that we were exactly completed yet. I felt there was more for you, like one more big thing right around the corner. We just had to, like, wait and see what it was. So we kept you alive. We kept you in the game. That's uh, all true. See. Yeah. It's all true. And you then guys. all of a sudden, right, that one phone call comes in. Do you wow. Remember? And what was that one yeah. phone call on your end? That's the Jim Bohannon Show. That's right. That's it was Westwood One. Millions yeah. of people, one solid hour. 
Uh, you know, you had a presidential aides on this program, top comedians, a top television producer was booked in the spot that I was in when he called out sick, and you guys went to bat for me and, and plugged me right there like little old me, like this is my first time out, and I'm here in this national presence. And not only was I on for one hour, I was on for two hours. Yeah, which was like terrific, too. And they told oh us my that, gosh. you know what they told us also, that the, uh, the, the phone lines were flooded. They said people were calling in all across America, and one guest said you oh, were the my. best. Or one caller said you yeah. were the best guest they've ever had on the show. And and you know you you, you talk about like life altering moments. Mm hmm. You know things that that change your life. You know because I I have this 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 vision and this mission, and I really do feel humble and as a servant, and that I have a good work to do. I I really I'm living that. You know, and and I want to be in that place. Mm -hmm. But when someone calls in and says, hey, Jimbo, you know, this is that top-rated show. I listened to your show for years, and, and I love your show, and this is the best guest you've had on ever. Keep mm -hmm. up the good work, Jimbo. And I'm like, wow. Well, wow, I, what a chance to, to, to impact lives through, through radio. Mm -hmm. That's the nice part about radio is that you're really up close and personal with your audience, and it's just you and the phone. So there's there's the pressure of being on on live and on the air, but yet you have your notes. You can relax a little bit. You can sip a little coffee, right? So it's less pressure than TV, but you're still reaching your tens of millions of listeners. In the case of the Westwood One show that you went on, you so know, that's it's a good feeling. It, it, it's a wonderful feeling, and just can I I want to share a technique that I developed because it was kind of surreal. You know, if anyone has um, public speaking difficulties or you know they feel shy mm -hmm. in some sort of a way, um, I, I love to public speak, so I, I don't have to address that. But um, what I did to be even be more comfortable was just talk to myself in the mirror. Oh, really? And really emote to myself and look in my own eyes as I was speaking. And it, it comes across as if you're talking to someone because it's kind of surreal. You know, we're talking about 34 million people, national coverage, you know, it being on the website, all this exposure. It's like, wow, but it's kind of surreal because you're in your living room, you're on your couch, you're talking, you're Googling stuff as they're talking. Maybe you want to check your notes. I mean, mm -hmm, sure. You know, you're just doing this, and you're reaching all of these lives. So I had to, you know, uh, to keep the passion and the expression. You know, look at yourself and talk and really just do your speech, and it's just you and you with the radio, but yet you're reaching so many people. Oh, I know. It's just like this conversation we're having right now. Tens of millions of people could be listening, but we're still having the same conversation. They're just eavesdropping on our, with our, on our, on our, on our hearing our message. It's so intimate, mm -hmm. you know. It's mm -hmm. not that intimidating public speaking. So if you want to go out and, and, and start trying and you have that kind of public speaking thing, this is, this is just great. And to get this kind of feedback, and you guys are giving me feedback and training and insight as I go along into what I could do better or how I could do it, 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 it was easy. You know what I love? You brought up a really good point about just the ease of which it is, uh, how easy it is to reach so many people without having that whole fear of getting in front of, imagine if you were standing before a million people. I mean, uh -huh. that would be insanity. That would, that would be nerve-wracking. I agree. Uh, a, a, first time time out. a first time out, you know, and we were talking coast to coast with the coverage that I have. There are some really great shows, you know. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and the I radio allows you to really just relax. We're having a conversation. You almost forget that there's so many listeners, too. Just kind of talk, you know, share your feelings. Ex ex exactly. So it's, it's easy. And, you know, the, the, um, what I want to say, I really want to say that you guys so over, over, mm -hmm. over delivered. Thank you. Like, like really over delivered. <laughs> Like you, you don't hear that. You know, maybe somebody let you go for a quarter or something for change. You know what I mean? Right, right. Uh, you, you, you guys, and, and the, the quality of the over-delivering. And now here's the bonus. I'm sitting on my sofa <laughs> talking to millions of people in a service that's been over-delivered to me, and I get to reach my goals and my mission and to be seen differently and heard differently and be recognized as an expert for something that I really want to give to build that platform so that I can really give the things that I want to give in this life. That, this is just a tremendous opportunity. Well, I appreciate it. It really is, you know, we're here to make your dreams come true, and it's, it's you, it's every client that, that comes through our doors. We wrap our arms around them, and we want your dreams to come true. We want you to live the dream of helping other people with your message and the mission of your life, of seeing yourself in motion, out there doing what you've always dreamed you were able to do. You mentioned to me in an earlier conversation that you felt the radio really... It changed your life 
And it also changed, very interesting, sort of the level of, uh, of, of course, your achievements, but also the way other people looked at you, too, in terms of the building the expert status. And that's important because that leads to more opportunities, too, for you. It, it really does. Um, you know, uh, there's so many points in there. I, I think I'll start with the last one. And um, building exposure for myself, you know, uh, prior to, to working with uh, Annie Jennings PR, I'm, you know, posting on my blog. I had a media blog. I'm emailing out to producers and so on and so forth. And not get, I got, you know, small radio stations on my own. You know, maybe somebody's listening, maybe somebody's not. You're not really sure, mm-hmm. you know, but you do it anyway. <laughs> yeah. You know how it is. And and now I put on my, um, you know, on my email attachment that, you know, I've been on the Frankie Boyer show or I've been on the Jim Bohannon show or, you know, the Jim Buchanan show. Many number one top ranked 50,000 watt stations in the big market. You really, you had a great campaign here. But see, that's that what we do. And these are shows that have 300,000, 400,000, and on up listeners per quarter hour. Those are real listeners. That's the power yeah. of being booked on the big shows in the big markets. It, it was surreal. Mm-hmm. It was it really was surreal. You know, and, and, and I've said to you all before, it was magic, it was the timing, it was the hard work. It was coming prepared as, as a professional to, to do a thing and having that vision. And I think if you have that vision that you, you owe it to yourself to just go ahead and take this step, you know, I could have made other decisions on, on how to spend the money. And, um, you know, and, and, and some of them would have been solid decisions, but I don't think any of them would have gotten me this kind of return. And even realizing, like you say, you know, a, a top number one rated show and mm-hmm. and the phone lines are flooded. You really do. You have a strong media bio. So what you have now is a media bio. You have you have an asset. These radio shows will act as an asset, much like gold is a financial asset. The radio shows in your radio schedule and the high-powered shows you're on with the celebrity host are media assets. They're business assets for you to build upon. And I have to say, though, I remember speaking with you before you signed on with us, you really took the leap of faith. You just, I think you knew in your gut it was the right thing to do. And I know it wasn't an easy decision for you. I mean, we were in the deep in the recession, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, I know that there were, like you said, there were other things you could have done with the money. And I knew, I personally knew, you took the leap of faith. I, I really, really, really did take the leap of faith. Mm-hmm. It, it was it was a white knuckle experience. So glad that I did because even my level of self confidence now, my energy to go on, my inspiration because you know I was doing these things on my own and and you know I was landing this or that. But that that's one sort of inspiration. This is a whole nother sort. And when I say to people, you know, I, oh, I was just on the radio. Oh my goodness! Like, oh my gosh! Would you come speak at my thing? Would you come speak at my thing? I'm getting speaking engagements now just because I like, you know, name drop. Oh, I was on the radio. Right, that's the whole part of your media bio forever, and you are allowed to say yes. I was on one of the biggest shows in the entire country, wow. not just for the one hour format, but the, but for two hours it kept me over an entire hour because the call there was it was flooded. They had an experience this before. Yes, you will get you know, you will get speaking events. From that. Couldn't have purchased what occurred here in terms of the nurturance, the commitment, <laughs> the, the results. I could not. I could not have afforded to have purchased it. You know what's so funny is that you're right. Money cannot buy what we sell, and I say that to the publicists all the time. It's really surprising you picked up on that <laughs> because we often say, you know, people can't buy what we sell because it's just so in depth. There's so much more. You can't. I mean, like, you know, um, you know, Mariana, when she welcomes you in and says it's okay and she feels that Grand yeah. Rapids experience for you and, mm-hmm. and comforts you on in and tells you what it is and tells you honestly and yeah. tells you what the expectations are and what you guys promise, which you don't promise, which is, I think, kind of, um, I, I don't know, it's a technique that you all have, but you know secretly that you're really going to deliver. Oh, of course. If you don't promise... <laughs> Of course. I even you know, undersell. I'll tell you, you I'm number one that. in the industry. I, yeah. You can't I buy anything that. better. And, and I often think, well, oh, geez, it's the truth. But then later, the clients come back and they say to me, well, you really undersold yourself. You yeah, know, I'm and, telling you I'm number so one. Part of you. It's Pardon? so smart of you. It's so smart of you to do that because, you know, I'm sure the other clients feel like I do that, you know, oh, yeah. every opportunity that I have to work with you and, and to promote you and every opportunity that I have that we could be together in some way, I would take advantage of that opportunity. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you can't buy that kind of goodwill. You really can't. It came yeah. from the heart, you know. Stacy working with, calling right back on time, being there all the time, like, you know, right on the moment. 
the emails going out, Jason doing the work, you being there with the vision, supporting the whole team. You you you, you can't buy this stuff. <laughs> Well, with that said, I think that's a perfect way to end. You can't buy this stuff. I love the way you said that. <laughs> well, Lynn, no, it's, thank it's, you. Thank you. Well, Lynn thank is the you. author. Let's remind everyone about your book, all right? Mm-hmm. It, uh, Lynn Parker is the author of What Did the Doctor Just Say? And, Lynn, tell me just a little bit about what what your book is about and why people might want to check into What Did the Doctor Just Say? Maybe they want to buy a copy for themselves. Well, um, I think that everyone should have a copy of what did the doctor just say because every time you enter the healthcare mm-hmm. system or you see a doctor or uh, other healthcare provider, you have a one in four chance of becoming a victim of a medical error. Wow. The numbers are staggering. Mm-hmm. 1.5 million medication errors, which translates to every third prescription being written in error. Really? Every third prescription wow. of some sort. Maybe it was wrong for your gender, for your race, for your age, for your kidney function, some sort of an error. Then to move into the helpfulness, because these things are frightening mm-hmm. and they can be overwhelming, and I don't want to do that. I wrote the book because I've seen a lot of these things, and I know that 80% of medical errors can be avoided. And this is not me, this is JACO, the Institute of Healthcare Research, and others. Um, saying that 80% of med- medical errors could be prevented if patients knew how to ask questions, if they knew how to make decisions that were safe for them and that were empowering for them, and that they, if they became leaders in their health care team and knowing what was going on, that they would be a lot safer. Docs are overwhelmed. They're tired. They need our help, right. and we need our help. And we need to be a team, and we all need to be active. Health care is a very, very stressful situation for both sides. Mm-hmm. And we need to work it together. And one last thing, if I could say. Sure. Thank you. The question sets that are in the back of the book will guide you through getting a doctor to taking prescriptions carefully or to end-of-life care planning and caring for our loved ones at the end of life. So many mm-hmm. of us are caring for loved ones and our caregivers, and we don't know what choices to make. And the book guides you step-by-step step to finding out what choices are best for you so that you can be sure that you've done a good job at the end of the day by your loved one. Perfect. And I want to remind everybody that uh, we've just been speaking to Lynn Parker. She is the author of What Did the Doctor Just Say? And, Lynn, would you mind if I gave out your website address? Not at all. Well, here we go. It is whatdidthedoctorjustsay.com. <laughs> so you know, you can reach Lynn at whatdidthedoctorjustsay.com and also be sure to check out Amazon and get a copy of her book. Why not? It's, it's fabulous. So you've done a terrific job. I just want to thank you, Lynn, so much for being a, being our ideal client. Of course, you were terrific. And we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank okay. you, Annie, and everyone at Annie Jennings PR. My pleasure.